The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on Protecting Retail ATMs, a Guide to Preventing and Detecting Skimming. My name is Linda Toth. I'm Director of Standards for Connexus, and I'm your host today. Next slide, please. Today we have, uh, Bruce, can you go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, our agenda today is I'm going to go over some housekeeping items. I'll introduce our presenters. I will talk a little bit about Connexus. Uh, Bruce will talk about the National ATM Council. We'll get to the main presentation, and then we'll leave plenty of time for Q&A. So housekeeping items. The webinar is being recorded. It will be made available in approximately 30 days, and it will be available on our YouTube channel. The URL is shown there. You can also find it uh, through a link on our website as well as the National ATM Council website, natmc.org. It's not shown there. Um, in addition, after the webinar is over, about an hour from now, you'll get an automated email, and there will be a survey in the email. If you click through to the survey, take the survey, it's only a couple of questions. At the end, you'll be provided with the, uh, a link to the slide deck. All of you are in listen-only mode, so you won't be able to ask questions via the phone. Instead, there's a questions box, and you can type your questions in there, and at the end of the presentation, we'll get to those. You don't have to wait until the end of the presentation to type those in. Um, in fact, if we start running out of time, we'll do the questions pretty much in order, so I encourage you to get those questions in early. In addition, we ask that you don't ask vendor-specific questions. If you do, we'll either have to skip the question or genericize it, so stay away from vendor specifics. Um, and if uh, you don't, or if you're not on our, um, if you're not a Connexus member and you're not getting information directly about webinars, please feel free to email us at info at connexus.org and we'll add you to the webinar uh, email list. So next slide, please. So for our presenters today, again, I'm Linda Toth, I'm your Connexus host, and today we have two subject matter experts to share the information. Uh, the first we have Al Jamir. Um, Al has over 30 years experience in IT and technology, including uh, companies like Hewlett Packard. He's currently the Vice President of Cash Depot, which is based out of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Cash Depot is a full ATM service provider and they are also a long-standing Connexus member and supporter. We also have with us Bruce Renard. Bruce has three decades of experience in both public and private sectors. An attorney by trade, Bruce is currently the Executive Director of the National ATM Council, or NAC. And that's not to be confused with NACS, which is the National Association of Convenience Stores. The National ATM Council is the leading domestic ATM trade association representing America's retail ATM industry. Bruce also participates in the U.S. Payments Forum, formerly known as EMV Migration Forum, and he's particularly involved with the ATM Working Committee, where he has been recognized for his significant contributions in industry outreach initiatives. So next, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Connexus. We are a nonprofit, volunteer-driven organization. We are independent from NACS. However, we work closely with NACS uh, as their technology partner. Um, we do a number of things, including setting standards. We also educate. We do white papers and webinars. We advocate for the industry um, by participating in outside organizations that either create standards or set policies and we're at the table to make sure that that doesn't negatively impact our industry. Um, the next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we do monthly webinars about. Um, we skip October typically because of the NAC show, um, but here's a couple that we've done recently. Um, the next scheduled webinar is on November 17th on cybersecurity, and then December and 2017 will be announced shortly. Um, next slide. If you're at the NAC show next month in October, you can see us at the Technology Edge Solutions Center. Connexus partners with NACS to bring you the Technology Edge. 
um, we'll have a solution center on the floor as well as a track of education sessions during the show October 18 through 21. And then finally, I'd like to remind you to save the date in April 23 through 27 when we have our annual event. This year we'll be back in Annapolis at the Lowe's Annapolis Hotel. It's a great venue. Um, we have a lot of education sessions there as well as committee work. So with that, I'd like to turn this over to Bruce, who's going to tell you a little bit about NAC. Linda, thank you, and good morning to everyone on the webinar. Thanks for your participation and taking time from your busy schedules to be with us this morning. And thanks to Connexus as well for doing the excellent work that has been done to help, help prevent skimming at sea stores throughout the nation. Uh, I have the privilege of serving as the Executive Director of the National APM Council. Uh, as noted on the slide here, NAC is the National Trade Association that represents the independent ATM owners throughout the United States. We're a relatively new organization. We were formed approximately five years ago to focus on the various industry issues that impact this sector. And our mission is to protect, preserve, and represent the interests of the ATM owners and suppliers of America, and that includes a lot of merchants out there who are also members of NACs and participants within the Connexus realm. <clears throat> we uh, also have our annual conference coming up uh, next month. Unfortunately, there is some overlap with us and the NACs conference. Uh, which we will make sure never happens again. That was totally inadvertent. Uh, we certainly encourage you, if you can, to try to attend both shows. Uh, we have a number of folks who will be doing so. Our conference uh, is in Orlando, so it's not too far of a hop from Atlanta. Uh, and it will be uh, there from October 17th through the 20th. It's going to be a great event, and as part of it, uh, um, proud to say we have a uh, first ever ATM Security Academy, which will go into further depth on the skimming issues and cover a host of other issues that are facing the ATM business today to try to help uh, merchants and ATM providers become more safe and secure in their work. And so with that, uh, we're ready to begin the webinar. And again, thank you for being with us today. Let me also uh, introduce and thank Al Jameer for being with us to help uh, make this presentation this morning. Al, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Bruce. Thank you so much for the welcome. And uh, good morning to everyone listening out there. We hope the information that we give you, uh, you'll, take, you'll take seriously to help service uh, or provide better service for your customers. Bruce? Excellent. Thank you, Al. So as everyone knows, today's subject is skimming detection and deterrence at convenience stores for convenience store owners and independent ATM deployers. Connexus and Mac have recently worked to produce an anti-skimming guide specifically meant for use on the ground in the trenches at sea stores throughout America. That guide is available from both Connexus and Mac websites. We encourage everyone on the call and this morning on the webinar to please get a copy of it, download it. It was designed to be very user-friendly, very readable. It's uh, essentially a one-page document. Two sides of one page is what we had in mind. And we hope that people will be able to print it out, laminate it, and put it in the book that you keep next to the register for your staff to use and refer to on a regular basis. The background, as we entered into the, the uh, whole review of skimming, both Connexus and, and Mac were very concerned about a, uh, a study that came out recently from FICO purporting to suggest that skimming and ATM card fraud was rampant uh, out there at retail ATMs. And this did not comport with our understanding of, of the business, and so we began asking our members, ATM providers, and merchants, had they seen skimming at their retail ATMs. 
And the answer was pretty universally no. And so we felt it important then to perform a, an actual survey that would demonstrate the, uh, the instances of skimming or the lack thereof in the retail ATM space. Uh, before I talk about the survey results, let me drop back to say what is skimming? Skimming very simply is the theft of card information and PIN, you know, personal identification number information at the ATM. Using the ATM as a platform for stealing people's card data and their PIN. And that's obviously a very bad thing. Uh, it happens, it can happen at ATMs, it can happen at, uh, at point of sale devices, and it can happen at gas pumps. And so, certainly from a C-Store perspective, skimming is a very high priority item to make sure that your premises and your stores are safe. To try to get a benchmark of where we stood with skimming, we asked the retail ATM industry to tell us their experience. And the survey results showed that 9 out of 10, you know, 93 percent, more than 9 out of 10, have never had one skimming incident. And those people had been in the ATM business typically for 10 or more years. So it was very apparent from the survey that skimming was not a problem in our space traditionally. And this makes sense if you look at some of the experts on skimming, you will see that the historical examples are almost universally bank ATMs that have been skimmed. Those are the machines typically not attended and with much higher volume. Our machines typically are attended. There's people around and store personnel there, and they're lower volume, so they traditionally have been lower targets. Uh, and this the survey bore that out. But we didn't stop there because both Nexus, Max, and Mac realized that things were about to change, and that we were actually beginning to see the change. And the change was EMV. And I'm sure everybody on this webinar is all too aware of EMV and all the issues it's presented, the problems in the point of sale world, and uh, we're now <coughs> getting ready to go there in the ATM space. <coughs> and with skimming, as you can see from the chart on this slide, uh, in, in uh, the UK, when EMV went into place, skimming, card skimming actually went up for several years following that implementation. Why? Because the bad guys realized that the window would eventually close and they felt compelled to use their ill-gotten card data and get the card data and use it at ATMs to get the cash while they still could before the window closed. So with EMV comes a, a higher focus on skimming and what we're beginning to see is in fact the shift more and more toward the retail space. On this slide, you will see the October 21st date. I would mention that simply because there's been a lot of confusion in the marketplace with people thinking it's October 1st. Uh, it, is, it is, in fact, October 21st for MasterCard, and we've worked to get MasterCard to let the banks know, that, remind them that that's the date, and to not start trying to send chargebacks our way any sooner than that. Uh, at the same time, we have just recently received word from Shazam, another debit network out there, that they're sticking with an October shift then. So um, bottom line remains, I think, you know, the protection for, for a lot of the exposure that comes with EMV is get, get EMV ready sooner than later, especially in the, in the ATM space. Al, before I leave this uh, slide, would you like to add anything at this point? Yeah, I actually just wanted to go back to the previous slide. You know, where it says, you know, on, that, on that pie chart, it says there's a big area for never. I guess what I'd like to share with, with the, uh, the audience that's out there, um, just have a mindset, not, not if it happens, but when it happens. In fact, uh, I was just watching the news this morning, and uh, one of the communities south of Green reside, they had they had skimming at the actual pump at the fuel dispenser, and the quick the quick and the short of it is, the owners of the convenience store saw this 
they contacted the local authorities, and the local authorities were there. They almost, they, they I think they're pretty close to apprehending the people, but um, you know, they, they were watching it, and uh, one of the guys got away, the other one dropped the key or something, but anyway, it does happen. So uh, all, I, all I guess I just want to share is that, you know, think that, no, this will never happen to me. Well, what if it does? What will you do? Who will you call? So the information that Bruce and I will share along with uh, the folks at Connexus, um, we really hope that you, you spend some time in considering reading it, sharing it with your team. Bruce, back to you. Thanks so much, Al. Excellent uh, point there. So <clears throat> let's get down to the, to the brass tacks here. How do, how do you actually do something to make your store environment safer and to detect and deter skimming at the ATMs in your C-store? Uh, first and foremost, where do you put the ATM? Uh, you want to have the ATM, if at all possible, within a line of sight, where your store personnel can regularly have an eye on it and be able to see something suspicious going on with the ATM other than its normal use. Obviously, you have to tell your folks what to look for and to, to be aware of that and that that's something important to them. Uh, that's one of your, your best defenses and one of the reasons that traditionally retail ATMs have been safer. Uh, secondly, if you have video surveillance in the store, which most do, uh, it should cover the ATM. You need to make sure it covers the ATM, but have it positioned, if at all possible, not to record the keypad entry or the screen entry so as not to inadvertently collect data that can be misused. At the same time, ideally you want to have it so your video would catch the face of the person using the ATM. And you also need to be mindful of smash and grabs in terms of putting the machine uh, in a place that would not lend itself easily to someone literally driving through the window or the wall and smashing the ATM uh, you know, to get it out of there, uh, which has happened and we've had rashes of these smash and grabs. And you hate to see you know, the ATM placed in, in a location near the perimeter wall and you're making it easy for the bad guys to get away with something. And at the same time, you also, as always, have to watch your back. And in this case, it means the ATM. And the ATM needs to be ideally placed where folks cannot get to the rear of it, where there may be entry portals to get into and create mischief within the ATM. So those are broad considerations. Al, uh, I think you've got some color commentary to add. Oh, your actual ab absolutely. You know, so we're, we've been fortunate that you know we uh, we're able to service um, and provide service for you know ten thousand ATMs uh, kind of across the country, and when we're fortunate enough to be selected as the ATM vendor of choice. Um, you know, basically, what we're able to do is sit down with the ownership, uh, maybe with the the uh, the merchant, and just talk about you know what our best practices. And just like the, the first bullet, the placement, uh, the line of the line of sight uh, visibility. When when their when their employees, their family members are maybe at the counter and can be looking at that. I th tell you, that that's a big deterrent. Um, video surveillance considerations. Again, we. Um, many many of locations already have that, so let's utilize the technology that's there. Uh, the smash and grabs. A lot of the uh, the uh, uh, merchants and C stores that we're working with, they they have the the concrete posts, you know, there, um, and they're 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 placing. They're allowing us to place our ATMs, you know, pretty prominently with great signage. And uh, just a quick story on the smash and grabs. Um, you know, it, it, selecting the type of ATM. Number one, when we do something, uh, we we tip it, we we bolt it down. Now, what happened in um, I think in, in in Baltimore two years ago, uh, when we did have the the Connectus Connectus conference in uh, in, in the Baltimore area. Uh, remember, there were riots. Uh, two of our ATMs, um, you know, were 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 in locations where the riots happened. And fortunately for us, 
Uh, yeah, it looked like they were trying to get the crowbars and things of that nature, but they, they never were able to break in. So part of that is, you know, selecting a great quality, you know, product with that security that you all rated. The last thing is that restricted access to the back of the ATM. Uh, one thing to consider is that in many of your locations, you now have wireless. And so sometimes these bad guys, you know, will, 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 will just place something up on top. And also, um, I think Bruce will talk about you know some of the best practices. But take pictures. If you all of a sudden you see a device on top of the ATM, was that device there, or is that what the bad guys are now using to, as part of their skimming skimming process? Bruce, back to you. Thank you, Al. And I think you can gather from Al's comments that it's very important to, to make these considerations on a site-specific basis. There's no one absolute formula for where to put it. It's a balancing act. You have, obviously, many other considerations for floor space in your store. Uh, you want the ATM to be visible so it gets used and, and you can see it. Uh, you know, but you also have ABA compliance considerations, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very important to work with your ATM vendor and you know, weigh these things out and come to that proper best location for the machine on a store-specific basis. With that, let's move on. Um, implicit in what we've been saying here, of course, is the importance of training your employees. Uh, whether you own the ATM or not, you know, it's your customers in your store that are using the ATM, and it's, it's therefore you know, to your benefit, keep your customers safe. And to do that, your employees, the store managers, owners, whoever's there, are in the line of first defense. And the first thing that they need to do, and everyone there needs to do, is become very familiar with the look and feel of the ATM. Check it out carefully. Take some photos of it. Keep them in in the book with the with the guy. And look especially at the configuration and the look, feel, and texture, stability, et cetera, of the card slot where folks put their card in, uh, the keypad where you're punching your numbers in, um, and, uh, and those you know, being the, the most, two most important aspects of the machine. Um, from that, you will have a base plate, and your folks will have a base plate to know if something is awry with the machine. So become familiar and know your ATMs. Lastly on this piece, if you have not already done so, touch base with your local law enforcement. Call you know, the, the local police. Tell them that you're a, you know, a vendor in the area. You've got an ATM. You know that skimming is happening out there. Do they have a protocol? And what would they like you to do if, in fact, you encounter a skimmer? And if they have something they'll tell you and you can know what that is and then be ready to follow it if you encounter a skimming incident. Uh, if not, you've tried and you know hopefully you'll get some useful information about it. Um, at least you've established a contact so if in fact you run into a skimmer, you've got uh, a base plate there. So what, what are you asking your folks to do? Uh, we recommend regular inspections every day and if possible, every shift. We recommend that these be integrated with your existing fuel dispenser inspections. Presumably, you're already looking at the fuel dispenser for skimming or other mischief, and this can be become part of that regime. Uh, it's basically the same kind of, of issue with a keypad and, and uh, you know, similar things to look for. Uh, you need to make sure in your program that you have some checks and balances in place. There have been instances where store personnel have been uh, approached and compromised by the bad guys to allow skimming to go on, and so you need a mechanism in which to check the checkers and store owners themselves need to ultimately be the ones to make sure that everything's on the up and up and that the employees are not uh, turning a blind eye to anything. So what, what do they look for? Again, the card slot, the reader where the card goes in, the keypad itself, and the placement of mini cameras. It's these micro cameras typically, in some cases it's the keypad, 
that are used to steal the PIN, the PIN information. Uh, there are also interior skimming incidents that have appeared. That goes to blocking access to the back of the machine uh, and not making it easy for someone to get into the interior. You need to make sure you have very you know, controlled access to the interior of the ATM and people are held accountable for that access where mischief can happen, whether that is to access the, the uh, cash vault itself or to just access the interior where a, a, an internal skimmer could be placed. It would be to your benefit <clears throat> to have your ATM provider show you or tell you or send you information as to <clears throat> where to look for an interior skimmer. If, in fact, you have access to the inside of the machine, it's your machine, but you're not sure what to look for, talk to your ATM provider, your vendor, and they'll show you what to look for. Also, do a Bluetooth scan. You know, take out your phone and see what kind of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices and networks are available at the store. That gives you your base plate to know if there are uh, wireless skimming devices that have been placed at your store. The latest versions of these devices actually allow the card information to be stolen and then wirelessly transmitted by a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth to the criminals who are sitting out in their truck in front of the store. And so to tell if there's any of that going on, you can look at, you know, get a look at what, what's out there in a normal environment when you know there's no skimmer attached uh, to anything. And then you know periodically when you look at that scan, if something appears that shouldn't be there, that's a tip that there's a problem. And last but not least, talk with your ATM vendors. The manufacturer, distributors, these folks are experts. They can, in some cases, provide you with technology that could assist in detecting and stopping skimming. Some of the new card readers that have come out have this built in, and uh, there are other add-ons that, that they can tell you about. So there, there's a lot you can do and a lot uh, that, that can be done without a whole lot of time and effort to, to uh, stop this. You need to know what you're looking for and build it into your normal routine to be able to catch it. Al, would you like to add anything here? Oh, absolutely. Um, again, you know, we're fortunate to, you know, be able to do business with um, uh, a, a lot of you that, that that are out there. And one of one of the things that we do when we are engaged and we're actually the ones installing it, part of our practice is we actually take a photo of of the unit. Number one, it tells it tells our operations team, yeah, this is it's a it's a clean installation, but it's also a reference point. Because as you can see on some of the photographs that, that are there, um, this is where I think we'll get into it in, in just a little bit, but uh, the bad guys that are out there, these are the things that they're putting in. They're, they're you know, with 3D printers that are out there, they can attach an overlay where the card reader is. And I think in the in, in the next slide we'll show you some of the some of the uh, the circuitry, but then the, the smaller photo on the left, it does show, you know, that 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 crescent uh, that, that crescent shaped device, the showing the where where the circuitry is, you know. But by having pictures, you can you can have a reference point, and then as part of that that daily or regular, um, you know, process that you have for checking the fuel dispensers, you know. If it's a quality product, nothing is going to be loose. If you feel something that's loose, these things are typically attached with two-faced tape. Okay, so part of it is you know just be vigilant, um, have a baseline of where things are, and then uh, you know going back previously, uh, when I checked uh, with our local authorities, we have for Brown County there is a cyber crime division, and that's who would take care of these types of crimes. You know, so again, uh, just uh, do yourself a favor. Just contact, you know, in in your local area. You know, what what would be the protocol to follow? Bruce, back to you. Thank you, Al. And uh, before we go to the next slide, just to come back to what Al was pointing to, the two photos you see on this slide, these are very very recent. These are within the last month or two. They are from New York. They are retail ATMs 
you know, a retail APM at a typical retail type store. I don't know that it was in a C store. It may have been, you know, an ice cream shop or something of this nature where we've really not seen skimming in the past. And what you see here is on the right hand side, just what Al said, they made a perfect overlay to go over that cart slot. And when they put it on there, it looks just like the normal cart slot. And it has, as you'll see in a minute on the inside, it's hollow and it has some electronics and two-sided tape. And so you can just step up and pop that thing on there and you're off to go. The other piece with the crescent, that fits in that crescent shape on the side of the ATM to the left of the keypad. And it fits right in there and, it, and you'll see in a minute it looks just like it. And that's the electronics on the back which support a pinhole camera which you'll see in, in just a moment uh, is at the bottom of that crescent. There's a tiny pinhole, that's all you see. And yet that's going to allow them to you know, video the pin entry and then wirelessly, remotely send it out. So let's, let's with that, let's go to the next slide. And Al, why don't you walk us through some of these examples here. Sure. Thanks, Bruce. Okay. So if you, if, if we'll go from left to right. If you take a look at that first picture on the left, that is the overlay for the card reader. Okay. And so what that will do is, as, as an overlay, it, it looks exactly like it, but again, it's going to be attached with two-faced tape. So as, as your customer, as, as a consumer is putting their, their debit card through there, first thing it does is it, it scans it. So now it has the, the, the PAN number. Now we go to the, the, the picture to the right where there's a, a pen with a red tip on there. That little hole on that crescent shape, yes, that is a camera. And what the bad guys will do is they'll, they'll time stamp it. You know, so they, now they, what they're able to do is capture the sequence of the pin and will match it up to the PAN number you know, of, of, during that same time stamp. And then uh, the third one, or the, uh, the third picture, again, that matched that up with the first one, that's that, that overlay. And then the, uh, the, the picture on the right, it, it's just another, another skimming device that, uh, that, that was found. Bruce, back to you. Thank you, Al. Yeah, that one on the far right, that also was found, both of these were found up in the New York area in the last couple of months. And that the one on the right is you've got the uh, the card reader overlay and the pinhole camera. You're seeing the electronics on the back of it, but it's the equivalent of these others, but it's made to fit seamlessly onto another device. We were advised that these were placed by you know Russian or Eastern European mobs, and this is a very you know organized crime type thing that has is showing itself now to start up in New York where we've been contacted by the law enforcement authorities in New York, very concerned about it, and we've started to see it in some other places as well. So the, the other part of this, in addition to your employees being the eyes and ears to help catch and stop skimming at your ATMs, uh, there's also the great thing that the customer can do, which is, in addition to doing what your employees are doing and should be doing, which is jiggling the card slot and you know, making sure things are attached and not put on the two-sided tape, as Al says, uh, they can at least protect their pin by very carefully and thoroughly covering the pin pad and their hand as it's entering the pin. Uh, just you know, really cover it, and I and I do this personally now. You know, literally wherever I go, that I have to enter my pin publicly. I cover it up, and you've got to cover it so you can't see the finger movements easily either. Um, but that's something that consumers can do, and putting a message like that on your uh, ATM screen and/or on signage uh, is you know shows the uh, customers you care about them. And, and keeping their information safe. As you can see from the earlier photo, with the pinhole camera in that one, it, the, the video would be coming from the side. So simply covering it, you know, hovering your hand above the pad might not do the trick. So you really do need to be careful. I've also noticed more and more that 
you know, for both point of sale devices and APMs, we're more and more building in uh, coverage devices to cover that pin up because that that really is kind of the goal, you know, keys to the kingdom. Okay, Al, can we move on here, or anything else on this one? No, that that's good. I, I, again, the only thing would be, you know, help educate your customers. You know, do them a service. You know, you might want to, you know, consider if it's appropriate to to have this type of a of a photo just uh, that just says, you know, here to 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 help protect you. You know, just having that picture, that would I think that would educate the consumer, your customers, you know, to also protect themselves. Bruce, back to you. Excellent, Al. Thank you. So what do we do if, despite our best efforts, uh, we find that there is a skimming device on one of our machines? First thing we say is look up but don't touch, and we're saying that because we don't, ideally we don't want to mess up any evidence that we might be able to gather and law enforcement can gather from the device itself. So first and foremost, call law enforcement and follow their protocol and, and try not to mess with the device. You know, the first instinct is if you feel something jiggling on there is to pull it and just pull it off. But it'd be better not to. It'd be better if you can, once you realize, oh, there's a skimmer here, uh, to just, you know, don't touch it. Uh, and get law enforcement in there as quick as you can so they can, you know, take fingerprints and do everything they need to forensically to get the best evidence that they can. Uh, obviously, you want to put a sign there of out of order, and you don't want people using the machine when there's a skimmer on it. Uh, so you need to, you know, make sure your customers do not use it once you know there's a skimmer. And in addition to calling law enforcement, because sometimes they won't be as quick as we would like them to in getting there to do something about this, and you don't necessarily want to be sitting there with your APM out of service for hours on end. So uh, we suggest you also, at the same time, on the front end, contact your APM and let them know you've notified law enforcement, and then you know tell them they need to get over there and uh, you know try to meet law enforcement, uh, you know, do whatever is, is the, the professional protocol that's appropriate given what law enforcement has told you uh, as to their local protocol. And basically do everything you can to try to protect the evidence, take photos, and assist law enforcement to try to catch these criminals so it doesn't keep happening again and again. At the same time, you have to be reasonable in terms of restoring your machine to proper functioning without skimming happening at the machine. So you do have to balance that out and obviously talk to your APM vendor about that so you can properly implement it. Al? No, I, I, again, it's perfect. Uh, as I said, uh, as I was um, uh, watching TV this morning, I just happened to you know, see something on the news at, the, at, a, at, at a convenience store uh, probably about 70, 90 miles south of Green Bay, and they had what I captured out of that is that the owner of the C store uh, saw basically something was was amiss on their on their fuel dispenser, contacted the authorities, and the basically the authorities um, were were almost had a sting because they were waiting for the perpetrators, the bad guys, to come back and get it. When they one of the guys, uh, I think they did apprehend the other guy. Took off running when he saw his buddy get arrested. So th that that's where again they they did contact the authorities. The authorities did kind of leave them as to you know here's the proper protocol. So again, all all we're asking you to do is just it's not if it happens, but when it happens, what will you do? You certainly don't want to be a victim uh, to this, and then all of a sudden it it comes on the news and. And uh, boy, uh, that 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 could be a bad thing. So, Bruce, back to you. Thank you, Alan. Yes, you do have to be sensitive, certainly, in talking to law enforcement. You know, and make it clear that you know, you're helping them and you appreciate them not notifying media because the last thing you want is media attention for something like this. But then, most importantly, 
is to be safe for you and, and the employees in the stores to be very discreet if they come across this because the bad guys could be there or sitting out in their truck and this sort of thing. But uh, you know, being being discreet but being aware, I think, is the is the key to try to tell tell your folks with respect to skipping. Okay, with that, let me uh, turn it back over, if I can, to Linda with Conexus uh, for any questions. Thanks, Bruce and Al. Uh, very good information that you presented. Um, if anybody has questions, if you would get those uh, typed in, um, we can get those answered. The first question we had was where to find the two-page employee guide. And we actually have that out on our website. Um, we have a We Care section on our website. It's www.connexus.org slash We Care, W-E-C-A-R-E. -E. That will take you to all of the, the various uh, public white papers that we have. If you're looking just for the skimming document, it's connexus.org slash We Care slash ATM skimming. So you can find all kinds of good information there. You can also see the same information on NACS online. So the next question we had um, was, how long will mag stripe transactions be honored at retail ATMs in the US after the liability shift? That's an excellent question, uh, Linda. I'll take a shot at it. It's the experts say that we're going to have mag stripe remaining on the back of the cards, even with the MB chips in the cards, for five or more years. Five to ten years is, is what's generally thrown out there. Um, but there is no exact date. The, the, the question is, how long will issuers, you know, bank card issuers, continue to honor transactions from ATMs that are mag strike transactions? And on the one hand, they don't want to upset their customers who are trying to do a legitimate transaction by denying the transaction. On the other hand, they don't want to facilitate fraudulent transactions any longer than they have to. And so there will be a balancing act there, and it's, it's difficult to say. I think the general wisdom is that uh, Max Stripe will continue to be honored for a good period of time, at least until banks get their full suite of cards out there with EMV. Once once their full suite of, of cards are EMV capable and you know, a large percentage of point of sale and ATM devices are all EMV, at that point uh, presumably we will see the issuers begin to deny uh, max right transactions for cards that should be EMV. Al? Okay. Yeah, I, I guess the, the only thing I would add to that is I'm hoping that everyone is considering uh, even EMV. So even though, remember, it's just it's a liability shift. You don't have to do anything. But I don't know if, any of, if, if anyone recalled, I think it was back in uh, early July or June, the bad guys um, ended up taking about like fifteen million dollars in Japan in a matter of like three or four hours and this was an orchestrated move in that through the skimming they were ab they were able to capture the uh, the the pan numbers along with the pin and then they orchestrated they, they made the cards it's like making a hotel key right um, it's a, with a magnetic card and if your if your ATM um, is not EMV and just takes mag cards. If you lose two thousand dollars out of that ATM after the liability shift date, that's on you or whoever owns that ATM. And also, I, again, it's it's one of those things. Mag stripe, as Bruce said, it's it's going to be there, you know, five years or greater. And it's a matter of are you willing to take the risk? And then what are we doing, you know, to to maybe um, you know slow down the bad guys because they're always going to be one step or two steps ahead of us. Bruce, Linda? I think it's important to mention too, Al, and that's an excellent point, uh, but I think it's really important to mention this for the folks on this webinar. Uh, in the point of sale experience, of course, there's been a lot of issues with certification, so that even if you had a terminal that was EMV ready, 
it's not certified, or the processor's not ready, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just been, as we know, a nightmare and all the, the chargeback stuff. So it's a little different with APMs. With the retail APMs, uh, they are certified. The equipment is certified. The card readers are certified. They're the same card readers that have been out there for 15, 20 years you know, in the field. They're very stable. Um, the one thing that we had to do was create the U.S. Common Debit AID. And this is very important because you've got to make sure that your machine is properly programmed with at the top of the list of what they call the AID list. You know, for the IDs for these, these networks, got to make sure that the common U.S. debit AID is the first choice always, and that you're not giving a screen choice, as we saw happen in some cases in the point of sale world, uh, to the to the cardholder, and you're automatically routing it to the common debit ID, and that's how you will maximize revenues on the ATM. Uh, and, but that was the, the only thing that really had to be created that was different for the U.S. to accommodate the Durban routing requirements, et cetera, et cetera. We created the common AIB, and we need to, to now use it. But other than that, uh, this, you know, all, all of the technology should be fairly stable and not requiring any special certification. So unlike the point of sale, if you can get EMV, you know, in your ATM, then you need to get EMV in your ATM because, as, as Al said, it can be a, a very costly problem, and there's not a good excuse not to have it in there, uh, you know, as quickly as you can to avoid the exposure. The bad guys will be looking for the terminals that are not EMV ready, and what's better than a, a machine that gives out cash to use these the remaining MagStripe stolen card data? And pin day. So it's very important to upgrade to EMV. I don't particularly like EMV. NAC has tried to, you know, get the date pushed back for EMV, done everything we can to try to stop it and make the networks and the banks pay for it instead of making all of us on this call pay for it. Um, but the reality is it's coming and we're going to get hit if we're not EMV ready come. From October, so I would second Al's strong recommendation to, for everybody to try to get EMP ready if you possibly can sooner than later. Linda? Okay, thank you. Um, so the next two questions are, uh, I think, interrelated. But what do you recommend if the police don't show up when called? You know, commonly they view this as a victimless, nonviolent crime, um, and local police don't treat this as a priority. So what do you do, and at what point do you go ahead and take the skimmer out? Excellent question also. Al, I can take a first shot at okay. this. Um, okay. If you, basically, uh, what we tell folks is it's kind of the couple of hour rule. I mean, obviously, it depends on how, how much your machine gets used in your particular store, how long you can afford to leave it out of service. Uh, this is why we tell you call the, the ATM vendor at the same time you call the cops. So at least if the police are not showing up, uh, you, you know, you've got an expert there to help restore the machine properly. And what you and your vendor need to do is take photographs, and this, this is covered in the guide, um, but basically take photographs of the thing as much as you can inside and out, touch it as little as possible, put it into a plastic bag, you know, wear gloves first of all. Put on a clean glove. You know, put on a glove, and you know, don't touch it. it. Touch it as little as possible. Put it in the bag, in a plastic bag, and keep it there. And have the photos and all that ready when law enforcement finally does show up. And then get the thing restored to proper service as quickly as you can yourself if you're doing, you know, unable to do it, or your ATM vendor if that's who does it for you. Uh, and that's basically what you need to do. In addition to your police option, you also can talk to the Secret Service. They are also on this, and they view this as a serious national you know, crime, international crime issue. And so um, if, if you're not getting good response from the police, either on the front end or when an incident happens, I wouldn't hesitate to, to get my, my local uh, 
you know, uh, local office there and call. And and I think um, they may be willing to help you going forward in addition to reports. I know Connexus and Max have done some some work with the Secret Service on this already. But when do we may have something to add? Um, no. Yeah, I think that that's good. Um, we had another question. I think that was kind of related. Um, do you have to shut the ATM down if you find a skimmer? Is it a require like a legal requirement or anything? You could no. be exposed to the liability if you don't. Go ahead, Alan. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say no. The, the, as far as I know, the, there there is there's I've not seen any laws, any mandates on that. It just it would be just common sense that uh, if if you see something especially if you know if, if you if you see it's, it's a skimmer um, I would I would just mark it you know as out of service um, you know to that point um, get the authorities involved um, because I, I would think that the bad guys they're monitoring that all of a sudden if if they're not if, if, if they're not if they're monitoring it and if they're not they're no longer seeing transactions they gotta, they gotta, you know, start start shaking because, uh oh, we've been caught. Now, now what? And so they'll either abandon it, um, and uh, hopefully the the authorities can catch them. Or you, you, what we're doing is we're protecting the consumer. We're protecting the customers that we love, that we serve. You know, by making sure that no 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 one else is going to be uh, breached with that information. Linda, uh, Bruce, right. back to you. Yeah, I was just going to add, you could be exposing yourself to liability to the extent you knew a skimmer was on the device, you left it there, and then bad things happen. And if there, somebody's looking for, you know, deep pocket or whatever, you know, for a lot of insurance coverage, they could look to you because you, you knew the skimmer was there, you did nothing about it. And and you put your customers' card information at risk by leaving it there. There there's no specific law. Al's right. It's not a you know specific law that says you must shut the machine down. Uh, there may well be provisions in the network rules, however, uh, which you know effectively have the force and effect of law that say you know if you know about a problem like that, you need to shut it down because you don't want to expose you know, the customer, the network, yourself, or anybody to more skimming than you need to. And with the remote uh, wireless capability on these devices, if you just leave it on there, they could be sucking the information out right then and there. And so it's, it's very prudent. I think Al's giving you the perfect advice. You put a sign on there that says out of order and get the thing fixed and return to service as quick as you can. Wait a reasonable time for law enforcement to get there. If, you, if they don't show, you've got to do what you have to do to restore it, service, but try to keep the evidence as pristine as you can when they do show up. Okay, thanks. Um, so the, the next two questions I think are also interrelated. The first one is, um, if I have an incident, how do I find the right people in the, my area to talk to? And then additionally, some states or municipalities make sure they inform the press when a location is affected by skimmers and even invite the news to report, um, which could negatively impact the site. Um, are, there, are there ways um, to better report these incidents um, or work with the authorities so that the station can remain anonymous? And again, I, uh, Bruce, let me take this one. Again, it, it's really uh, preventive, ma uh, preventive uh, medicine, right? So if you're prepared for this and you know what the rules are, that if, if this happens, if, if you're part of a corporation or if it's just your, you know, a, a one, you know, one convenience uh, uh, location, you're going to want to know how will you address this. But if all of a sudden the accident does happen or the incident happens, and now you're not thinking clearly, and you forgot, oh my God, the news is going to be here. But if you know it up front, and you have a protocol, and you can talk with marketing, you can talk with, with uh, the management and say, okay, uh, maybe if you, if you have a public relations department, what will we do when this happens? Not if it happens, but when this happens, what will we do? 
So, Bruce, you want to take a crack at it? I think that's that's a very good question and a good answer, Al. I wish there was a you know a silver bullet really to answer that one, uh, which you know which there really isn't. Um, I mean, the bottom line is you really do have to do as much as you can on the front end so that you're not surprised when when you know something like this comes up and. Um, you know specifically, what do you do? You call your local, you know, either 911 or the local police, and and you report it. That's the right thing to do. What I can see you doing from a business perspective is when you finally get the person on the line to deal with this with you, the first thing you can say is, you know, I'm a store owner. We've had a skimming happen. I want to help you guys catch the bad guys, but I, I do not want my store on the news. I need your your promise and commitment that you won't uh, do that, and we'll help you. And if they can't give you that promise and commitment, then you know you kind of have a business decision to make. But um, you know, it's the right thing to do is certainly is to report it. And uh, but you you know, law enforcement typically in those situations should work with you to be reasonable. If there are, if, if you're in a, a a place where there is a law in place that says that it's it's okay or that the police must contact media somehow to report on something like this, I would appreciate your sending that. Send it to Linda or me or Al, and we'll investigate that because that's very counterproductive. If there's something out there that's going to cause businesses not to want to cooperate properly with law enforcement. We need to get that changed. Well, I think if I could add, the time to do all this is not when the incident happens, but well ahead of time. Yes. So contact your local law enforcement and say, if I have an issue, are you the right people to call? And when I call, what can I expect? So don't don't make it when it happens. You know that that it's a surprise, as as Alan Bruce said. You know, make sure you know who you're going to call ahead of time and what the expected response is going to be. And you can ask them, if I call you, are you going to report this to the media? And then maybe you should think about contacting somebody else and see what their response is. So we have two minutes left, and I think we've gone through all the questions. So I just want to wrap this up and say a big thanks to Al and Bruce for all the good information today. I hope everybody got some uh, good information to prevent uh, ATM skimming and to detect it if it happens. Um, again, after the webinar ends, you'll get a survey. If you go through that survey, it's very short. You'll get a link to the slide deck. If you have any questions that come up you know, as a result of thinking about this later, you can always email us at info at connexus.org or Al and Bruce, their emails are on the last slide. So thank you again for attending today's webinar. And with that, we'll let you go. Fantastic. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, Al. And thanks, everyone, for being on. Take care.